I will start with sharing some of my works, just a slideshow, uh, and talking a little bit about myself. Um, I uh, was born in Poland, but currently I am living and working in Germany. I work as a concept artist, senior concept artist for Ubisoft Studio, so I actually work professionally in game development. Um, but I spend a lot of my extra time uh, pursuing even more uh, in the creative field. And what I do for the last two years is uh, working on a board game. It's still the same board game. It's just so much work because I am illustrating the complete uh, game, the box, the cards, the board. Uh, and it's yeah, it's on the weekend work, so it takes forever. But I'm so happy because it's very close to the finish. Um, the board game is called Collab. Uh, and if you want to know anything more about it, I can direct you to um, the page uh, of the publisher, uh, it's Portal Dragon on Facebook, and we are currently looking for playtesters. Uh, or you can go to the webpage portaldragon.com slash collab, and you can enter your mail and you get notification when the Kickstarter runs, and it's really, really soon. So with this exciting thing, I want to show you a little bit of my work. So I use dominantly painter, I or rather say I basically use only painter for my illustration. Uh, and I super enjoy the software, they have amazing brushes, and that's the most important thing for me that I want to <clears throat> have the connection with the software where my work can look very traditional, uh, and uh, I really want to be able to avoid uh, to have the digital look. Uh, in my work, so brushes uh, and trying to imitate uh, oils and acrylics, uh, it's super important for me and I can achieve it here. But to, when I have to do a lot of work, I need to try a, some uh, find specific way of simplifying my approach uh, and ability to um, repeat uh, the same effect over and over even in space of two years, right? Uh, so I figured out using uh, layers, uh, effects, to start my illustration quite fast uh, and get fast results and just focus on uh, adding a, a last elements like in the 20% uh, of the uh, finishing the illustration. So for example, uh, this is a final illustration um uh, this will be uh one of the monster cards it's a mer melted marshmallow monster very cute very sweet um and this how looks uh the final file uh, i have a lot of layers that i worked with uh, and i will try to go through them and just explain what they are uh what was the purpose of everything um what i need to also take into consideration uh, and I think ev with every illustration is uh, what will be the final size. Uh, and when it comes to the cards, I of course know that the final size of the illustration on the printed card will be quite small. So it will be, I don't know, something about the size later on the paper. Uh, and that gives me ability to uh, not bother too much with the details, even if they um, yeah, like I, I have to paint, of course, everything, but it's quite rough. If I zoom in, you can maybe notice that it's not exactly super perfectly polished. Not everything is super blended. Uh, there are some mistakes sometimes. Um, but this also allows me to speed up the process. I don't need to spend extra, I don't know, four or five hours to uh, touch every single edge and detail in the uh, object that I'm painting. <clears throat> um, so what are the steps for me when it comes to uh, um, making the illustration? Um, I will need to return to the file that I heard previously, uh, and I will explain exactly why and uh, what happened between. So. 
The first stage for me, of course, is a sketch. <laughs> and the sketch can be really, really rough and simple. Um, it is a work with the client. So, of course, I'm not doing my own ideas. I need to uh, help an other person uh, realize uh, someone else's ideas. And I get sometimes description that is uh, either or very short or very long and, or mm, very um, free for my interpretation. Uh, and we had this one monster uh, that um, is slightly inspired by the marshmallow monster from the Ghostbusters, um, but should not be a, a direct copy. So I was trying to think about a mix of marshmallow and ice cream uh, and uh, uh, the sailor uh, elements. Um, and it was working. We got, uh, uh, I discussed it with my client. We thought for how to improve it. And the final sketch was looking like that. So we throw away the hat, we bite off a little bit of his head, and melted him even more and surrounded him by marshmallows everywhere. Um, and when I get the acceptance on the sketch, I can start doing colors. And in this case, actually, the first uh, stage, uh, the first step that I do is to um, create a flat. And uh, that means that all the elements uh, that have a one color uh, are separated on different layers. Uh, and I filled with the one color. And uh, and what I do actually is I add all shadows as a multiply layer. Um, so you can see that I just unhide it and hide it. This one layer gives the whole dimension to the character. And it is only a multiply layer with nothing else. Um, I add a secondary layer that is also a multiply to increase uh, some of the uh, shadows uh, and occlusion shadows. Um, even a third one, if I see it's necessary to really make the object feel really dimensional. Um, <clears throat> I add also uh, some special color overlay. This is an overlay layer. Uh, that have a gradient from orange to violet. Uh, and if you notice that uh, it changes that the head and the body are a slightly warmer tone and everything outside is slightly cooler tones. And this is what the overlay layer does, does for me. Um, and one more extra layer to uh, uh, push uh, uh, the shadow on the edges. So the all contrast or all lights are centered where I want to um, uh, yeah, have the main um, uh, object uh, where, where I really want to focus your vision on. And from this, so this is like, this really sometimes takes a little, little bit of time, uh, but um, it, uh, uh, I am at the uh, end of this step with so much done already. Like I have my uh, composition, my colors, uh, my general lights and shadows set up, and this is done only with multiply layers. And this is so great because I can modify them, I can go back to them. If I see some mistakes, I can uh, just remove some element. Um, and you can maybe notice that a lot of it is just an uh, airbrush. Uh, and the hard edges, when I need it to them, I often just use the selection and paint only inside the selection to achieve those hard edges. Uh, and when I'm happy with this, I will flatten the layers. That's why I have a separate file with the uh, final version. Uh, and on my flattened layer, uh, I will go and with the brush 
uh, and uh, add all the details, all the um, highlights. Um, if I miss any elements or I need to add a folds or anything else, this is the fun part when I can really uh, zoom in and paint uh, all the appealing stuff. Uh, and often at the end, I will flatten it again and, and add uh, some color adjustments uh, to uh, yeah, make the whole thing a little bit more appealing. I thought it was a little bit too pinkish, so I reduce uh, the, uh, uh, the magenta color in the highlights with the curves. So that will be one example, and basically I use exactly this approach in almost all the cards. Uh, so here I have a different one, and though this is a gadget card uh, with the steam engine backpack. And let me just hide those. Um, you can see that this is, let me just find all the proper layers that I need to hide. Here it is. So basically this uh, engine also started as only a flat color. It's a simple flat shape uh, that I've started building different elements on top of it, on different layers. Um, so there's a trick that if you want to create a selection out of the layer, you need to hold down a control on your keyboard and click the preview of the layer, and it will create the selection from the layer that you have. Uh, and this is also very helpful that later when I have the layer flattened, but I want to reuse the selection from the layers, I can always go back to it with creating a selection from the layer. And uh, let me just find this. And for example, like I have some uh, rust on separate layer. And again, like all the shadows is one layer for me. It is a multiplay layer. The whole dim dimension of the object comes from its shadow, and that's basically it, all. It's that, that simple. Uh, and in this case, I actually used a screen layer to add highlights. Uh, and those two layers, multiply and screen, uh, just serve me so well uh, to render uh, properly uh, any object I want. And again, um, when I have this step fi finished, I will go and flatten the layers uh, so I can start painting any additional details that I need to. And adding uh, like light effects. So I have one more layer with screen using just red color to add that dramatic red light or the uh, rim lights on it. So um, maybe I sh should show a little bit more of how this looks exactly step by step. Mm, I created a just empty file. Uh, this is still in Painter. Uh, and let me just explain or show exactly how do I use multiplayer and screen layer to render objects. Um, so, um, right, I have a uh, one layer with the object that I want to shade. I will create an extra new layer. I will just set it to multiply. Use some of my uh, brushes uh, here. Uh, and for the shadow, I will I can use something with color, but for now let's just use a simple gray, and it'd be something like a, a little bit below middle gray. 
And I can, if, if you are annoyed, I am personally very annoyed by the marching and selection. Like when I am painting, I like to hide it, but still selection is existing there. So you can go to uh, select and uh, hide mark. And you can still paint inside it, but you no longer see it. So it's not really bothering so much. Uh, my layer is already turned to multiply, so you can see that it's just adding the darkening. If I want to manipulate more the uh, color of the shadow, uh, I can go with the white color because the white color will not be visible on multiply. So I can push and pull on the shadow. If I want to now pick the color from the multiply layer that is exactly the same color that I painted with previously, uh, I can go to the color picker and here from uh, drop down menu sample, I can choose a selected layer only. And this allows me to, if I hold down control with my brush tool selected, and click on the shadow when I paint it. You can see it's gray. It's this exactly gray that I painted with. It's not the blue of the ball that you can see as a whole layers. So this is really simple um, way of getting a basic shadows on any object imaginable. And if I want to add a highlight, I will create one more layer, turn it to screen, uh, and maybe not to be very dramatic, I will use something uh, slightly darker than pure white. Oops, um, hide mark. And similarly, where with multiply layer, if you paint with white, it's not visible. On the screen layer, if you paint with black, it's not visible. So it's a little bit like an eraser. And this is very, very simple a very useful way of getting your basic uh, shadows and lights. Almost effortless. And what I already showed you, I do almost every time, I will flatten those three layers. Uh, and now, I can start blending the colors together when I think it's a little bit too rough or if I want to add some extra brush stroke to it or just, I don't know, basically start doing everything else on the surface of it. But this approach, it's, yeah, it's, it's my trick to uh, doing illustration quite fast uh, and uh, all of them being um, unified by the style of the rendering. Okay, so, I have uh, one more example. Uh, it's also a card illustration. Uh, this one is an illustration of the potion. I think this one uh, I have uh, with quite elaborate layer composition, starting almost from the background. 
So yes, the first lay background layer is completely flat color and the uh, folds on it are again painted with only multiply layer. I can even show it how it is, how does it look as default. So you can see there are white colors uh, and the warm gray as a shadow. As, as soon as I turn it to multiply, it gives the effect death as if that was painted false. Uh, here is a plane for a table uh, and a big multiplay layer just giving a better vignette uh, around the whole scene. Uh, and here are the flat colors for the object. Um, sometimes what I would do is just to not have completely flat one filled color. I would use some random brush strokes uh, to uh, yeah, just make the surface a little bit interesting. So it have, have some color change, some uh, this texture going around, but the shadow itself is again just it's one layer. Everything is on one layer as multiply. <laughs> all the folds, uh, all the surfaces, all the cast shadows. Uh, it's one layer and it's so easy because of it to manage like uh, you don't have to think um, oh what is the correct color of the shadow for red compared to black compared to this ecri color like I have just one multiplayer and everything is managed by only this one Coming next with the screen layer for highlights. Um, oh yeah, this is uh, my sketch. And after this, when I am happy with the, my multiply and screen uh, layer, I would go and flatten the layers and all add all the fancy details. So on this one, you can see Right, the stitches in the uh, color material, the uh, break, break, broken surface uh, on the cup itself. The ethics uh, brushes to do like those floating vapors. And this is all painted by hand when I flatten the image. Maybe I should show it like next to each other to really um, have a good overview. Yeah, it's like really not much changed. It's a surface detail. And this first stage when I just add shadow on multiply it makes so much work. Okay, so um, uh, how are how is the chat with the question, Tanya? Do we have any? Yes, we we have questions and um, lots of comments saying what value people are getting out of this. So I just wanted to let you know that. Um, mm. All right, so I'm gonna go back to when you were, um, people are very curious about your brushes. So from mm -hmm. the sketching to the flats and the shadows, you know, I could see, you mentioned the airbrush and I see some of the other brushes in your palette there. <laughs> some look like yeah. you've modified an original brush. Mm -hmm. I have some modified, I have some of the premium brushes, I have some of the standard brushes, 
Uh, what I have here on my right side is this custom panel uh, with all the brushes. And this is such a handy feature in Coral uh, that you can basically track like any brush you find in uh, your a category in any category. You can just drag and drop on the panel, so you always have it under uh, you know like one click away from you, and you don't lose it. Uh, and you can change from the uh, preview uh, to text view. So this is super helpful. And of course, it's not only for brushes. You can also put a paper panel, etc. So this is really, really great. But when it comes to the brushes, which one I use? I actually most often just use the um, standard one. So of course, I will go with the airbrush. And I really like the digital airbrush because it's very soft uh, for those very soft edges. For the hard edge, I like to use a scratch tool from Artistic uh, Favorites. And for sketching, uh, it's uh, my favorite. It's uh, I think it's 6B from Pencils. Uh, where do I find them? Yeah, I think it's in Pencils, Pens. I don't know if we have them lumped together. <laughs> yes, pens, have, pens and yeah. Pencils. Yes, 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 yes um it's somewhere here 6b soft pencil this is my favorite uh, brush for sketching because it reacts with the angle of your uh, pen so if i hold my pen 19 degrees toward the tablet the uh, oh, what i'm doing well, i'm probably still in selection Right. If I hold it 19 degree toward the ta uh, tablet, the line is very thin. But if I uh, angle the pen, uh, it have this a very soft, long uh, shape of the brush. So it's really cool because whenever I feel um, like line is not enough and I need to instantly shade something, I will use exactly this. And yeah, this, the, the, the quality of the line is so beautiful because it reacts to the pen tilt. <laughs> okay, that's great. Um, Trish is wondering for that hairy dry brush, mm -hmm. is that a default brush? Um, I think not. This is, I think, my personal created uh, brush. Yeah, um, I think so as well. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Uh let's see. What are some things that you wish you knew when you first started your career? Oh, <laughs> that's an amazing question. Um what do I wish I knew? Um that you really have to put a lot of heart into your work, but also be very understanding that any work for contract, uh, you you really want to make your clients happy and not prove them wrong, right? You don't want to um, push your ideas uh, if what you're supposed to realize is someone else's idea. I think I would suffer much less <laughs> uh, with a, a broken heart uh, seeing that, oh, I have this so uh, much better idea and I cannot do it. Um, it's like much better to agree that uh, I am here to help uh, and um, uh, I am going to make other people happy with realizing what they have in mind than being like having a very uh, big ego and say like, no, my idea is the best. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> um, there's actually a few people have asked, which brush did you use for, you know, kind of that cracked detail on mm -hmm. the cup in the last example? Mm -hmm. um, actually, just very small brush and everything is painted. <laughs> it's like there is no shortcut for this cracked one. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, um, this one. Yeah, it's um, uh, it's just basically the 
a scratch tool from uh, okay. artist favorites. It's like okay. very, very small. That makes me think maybe we should come out with a brush that like does the cracks. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, interesting. Let's see. I should know this, and I think you are. Are you on Instagram? Uh, yes, yes, yeah. But yeah, I lately I am uh, posting much less. It's like uh, it's uh, pan pa in pandemic. Uh, my mental health is priority, <laughs> and uh, yeah, the Instagram was not really helping recently. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, at least we know you're there. Um, mm -hmm. And we didn't talk about this. What kind of drawing tablet are you using? Oh yeah. Um, so my setup is uh, uh, it's a Cintiq 24 HD. So it's a little bit older model. Um, but honestly, uh, the Wacom products have such a quality that even after using it for I think it's five seven years now uh, and I use it extensively like I am using it 12 hours a day <laughs> every day uh, and there's not even a scratch on it uh, uh, and I can say the same about my older tablets like Intuos I think have a 15 years and it's still working so Wacom products uh, for me are, are the, 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 the always they were always in my life uh, and Cintiq, uh, so the tablet with the LCD screen, um, it helps a lot uh, in my work. Uh, I like to yeah, see the line coming from my hand, so like I, I, I like to see the line um, being uh, made by the pen I'm holding. Like I, I have really hard time to uh, have the correct, you know, like a, a correlation of what I see on the screen and my hand is somewhere else on a different spot uh, and honestly I have problem to draw a circle and with the <laughs> screen tablet I don't have this problem so it's like for me it was a big upgrade actually. Yeah I mean that's one of the best upgrades you can get if uh, if you can afford to do it. <laughs> yes yeah exactly. Yeah. Let's see. They're very curious, and so am I. Um, and it's they're probably all different, but is there like an, an average amount of time it takes you to complete just one of these cards? Oh, um, yeah. Or one of the illustrations. Um, I think that the first few takes a little bit more time because I was still yeah like trying to figure out this approach with multiplayer layers and screen layers and what is like the most optimal ergonomic way uh, but at the the after those few try uh tryouts uh i think the average was like six eight hours uh so yeah it was pretty pretty good uh it, it really worked out as a effective way of creating a whole illustration i am amazed just by you showing us how you use the layer modes and how that impacts the work it's pretty mm. amazing i think <laughs> people are asking oh can you show us again in detail um i don't know that we have time for that which is why we have it recorded here but when you were painting the sphere is that the mm -hmm. same brush that you typically use when you're adding the shadow types of details in your uh, illustration yeah. Uh, yeah, I uh, settled on this hairy brush because it have a like I, I really want to have an extra texture uh, and it is very textured. I think it's oh, just yeah. uh, it's very like a stamp. It probably it just have uh, dots as a stamp uh, and have uh, quite um, big spaces between them. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just, it's basically just really the texture I am going after. Uh, but for this approach with multiplayer layer, it could be any other brush and it can be also very uh, smooth. Oh, now I flatten all the layers, but it could be also just uh, um, 
yeah, an airbrush if you want to achieve like those very smooth transition of the colors. Um, mm. So yeah, it's yeah. it's all about like the final effect that you want to uh, have. Yeah, that makes sense. Do you typically choose a um, standard paper texture that you work with, a canvas texture? Um, actually, I have uh, 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 my uh, ah, sorry. Um, where are those? I do have oh, a no, paper. I don't see. Uh, yeah, right there. Mm -hmm. um, so I actually most often use like my private one. I scanned some different papers uh, and prepare them. Uh, so they have a lot of scratches and also yeah, like very strong texture. Like I really love textures. <laughs> Um, everything to uh, make this final uh, picture look as traditional as possible. It's like I really love happy accidents uh, and using texture brushes and strong papers is uh, the way to achieve that. Let's see here. Corey is asking, how did you end up in a position like you're in, in game illustration, where did you look? Who do you connect with? Do you have any advice? <laughs> oh, uh, it was quite a long way, actually. Uh, I started uh, in completely different uh, 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 environment. I started in advertising, and uh, I was a graphic designer, um, and. I just got this opportunity, so it was a lot of luck included uh, that uh, the studio who my friend worked in was looking for an artist uh, and the offer was quite good and I could transition, but it was always on my mind. I had always loved games and I was only waiting for opportunity to start my career in games. Um, so it, it wasn't, uh, it was luck and my pursuit of the career. <laughs> All right. Oh boy, there's a lot more questions coming in. Um, <laughs> you have Trisha saying you have a great sense of shadow and highlight. Any advice to move forward with getting that right outside of mm. the tips that you've shared? <laughs> oh um, yes, uh, still lives. Uh, I am painting them a lot. And this is like my way of understanding light and uh, uh, shadow and colors. Uh, and I do them from life. Like I don't paint from the photo. I actually set it up in front of me and I would paint it. Uh, both of those were painted in coral. Uh, and this is, um, yeah, it takes, uh, it's not easy. Uh, it's also quite challenging, uh, but the more you do them, the better you become at it and it's easier to transition it later to illustration from imagination like what you learn looking at uh, real life uh, you later take with you and you can apply it to everything else so it's such a great uh, skill like painting and drawing from life is a must <laughs> great advice do you ever use any other blend modes besides multiply and screen? Um, overlay, so from time to time, but um, at the, this I experimented before with others, and but I found the multiply and screen just works the best, and they're easy enough uh, to modify. Uh, and yeah, yeah, it's it's all I need. <laughs> Okay. Um, Jeff is wondering, are any of the brushes and that you've shown here slash settings unique to Painter 2021 or do they exist in older versions? That might be a hard uh, one to answer. I think um, most of them are compatible. Like this is, um, those brushes, uh, I still have this since 2019, uh, Coral. Because okay. yeah, it's like I'm I'm working on it for the last two years, so <laughs> I'm just updating the software by the brush, but the brushes are still the same. <laughs> All right, yeah, I think you know most 
and that's typically the case like even in older versions you can still get the same kind of effects exactly um, exactly helen is wondering because you are so fantastic at lighting and shadows do you ever set objects up to oh i mean yeah. you wouldn't have a mm -hmm. marshmallow man to set up but <laughs> But I still have to, uh, I, I had to buy a pack of marshmallows and see how they <laughs> change when you oh, uh, item. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's everything. Like my, I, I can still say that, yeah, I use a lot of references. Uh, and um, I have um, a paper cutout uh, geometric shape that they also set up under different light if I am not sure what I am uh, painting and they are just laying around here on my desk so I can grab them and uh, rotate them in space to confirm if what I think is correct is actually correct in reality. Uh, so yeah, absolutely, like uh, this is, uh, uh, like I, I wouldn't dare to do it completely out of my imagination. <laughs> I need to check with reality if that's correct. Okay. Um, do you have a typical resolution that you work in? Um, it all depends on the final print. Uh, mm -hmm. And I still uh, scale it up uh, at least two times, sometimes three times to uh, yeah, also have enough space for texture to work with it. If I work with the canvas that is too small, the paper texture is uh just too big and yeah it, like it goes interrupt uh, the brush uh, uh, work too much so yeah i try to fit the uh, final print size uh but also uh, not too small uh, and not like super big that i yeah i am waiting for one brush strokes five minutes <laughs> Okay, Dan has asked this two times. I apologize, Dan, but he's wondering how do you handle the composition restrictions you have not quite knowing what the end product will look like? Mm, um, so I have uh, here um, two layers that are like my helping layers. Uh, and this gray one is the size of the bleed. So how much of the illustration will be cut out? Uh, and here is uh, a general uh, layout of the cards uh, that is, it still, of course, may change, right, a little bit, but they have, at least I have an orientational, uh, a, uh, oh, I, I know the position of some of the main objects. Um, and this is what I work with. But of course, uh, the bleed is this big uh, to allow uh, for zoom in or scale uh, down uh, later uh, so I, I yeah i leave enough space of, uh, there to manipulate the final illustration okay and a, quite a few people have, have asked um what your training has consisted of school did you do traditional artwork mm -hmm. um yeah, yeah. <laughs> actually yes uh uh, I went to high school that had a artistic profile. So for uh, all the years of my high school, I had uh, uh, sculpting, painting, graphic design, uh, and this was really nice. But you know, I was a teenager. It wasn't exactly like a, I knew exactly what I would do with my life. I just wanted. I just liked to paint. Uh, so of course the it's not like an art academy, um, uh, but it was really great because it at least uh, directed me to what I really wanted to do, and I knew that I am not a big fan of uh, uh, like a um, museal museum art, and I was very tech savvy, so uh, I was very interested in joining technology and art together, uh, and. Uh, started with the uh, um, graphic design uh, and yeah, uh, posters and uh, business cards was my uh, nemesis for a few years. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, uh, still looking at the um, uh, industry and what is happening, like my first graphic tablet and being completely blown away that, oh, wow, I can, I can paint on a computer, that is so incredible. Uh, so yeah, it's, 
I, I'm, I'm actually quite long on this word doing this. So, <laughs> Gosh, I'm so impressed that you, I don't know. We're all just <laughs> impressed. It's amazing, <laughs> your talent. Um, is, uh, I can mention also, I don't know if everyone know this window here, because it's not by default, I think, in Corel, uh, in Painter. Um, this is an extra window that just shows the duplicate of your picture in uh, whatever scale you want to uh, place it in. And you need to catch the one corner. And you can, you can if, a, if you have a second screen, you can throw it to your second monitor. And this is great to uh, manage your composition as well. Because even if you like zoom very close and you paint some details, you look at the full picture all the time. So you know that every brushstroke you make uh, actually makes sense and looks uh, fine with the rest of the picture. So navigation, navigator window, I recommend to use because it's really helpful. It's in window um, navigator. You can get it from here. Great. Well, guess what? I think we have addressed all of the questions. Um, people are very interested in seeing more from you. So I just <laughs> wanted to remind, because some people show up late, the session has been recorded. Um, we do also have some tutorials existing from Magdalena. So I can point those out to you if you like. And she just did a whole series for Painter Essentials as well. So yes. she used to yeah, um, those are, they're not yet posted up on YouTube or anything, but I, I will get to that shortly. And I'm just going to take one more quick scan. Um, so if you were going to, like for the board game, when you have to print, does that have to be 300 DPI or could it be less than that? Mm, yeah, this is a very good question. Uh, and it's quite important to understand what the DPI means uh, because it doesn't affect the pixels. Like if you uh, create your new, uh, canvas using a pixels, uh, what the resolution in the um, uh, this window be, it doesn't really matter um, because it only means how many pixel per square inch will be. So uh, if you change units to inches or centimeters, this is the only way, uh, uh, like option where the resolution really affects how many pixels there will be. So yes, uh, if you create a new um, canvas uh, and you look and you want to have a specific 21 to 21 uh, centimeters, then resolution have to be 300. Um, like I learned that uh, the anything below 300, uh, it's when you print above a, a five, no, a three. Um, but everything below it have to be 300 uh, pixels. Uh, sorry, 300 DPI. Yeah, I probably make it more confusing than it actually is. <laughs> mm, no, I think that made sense. Um, Nobody else is asking any more questions here. So I think we did it. We got everything answered. Um, hopefully I didn't keep you too long, Magdalena. Oh, no. no, it's always a pleasure. <laughs> it's, uh, it's incredible to share uh, with everyone what you can do. Uh, and it's, it's really um, like, I, I don't think we should, as an artist, feel guilty that we are using some cheats and, um, yeah, it's like the digital itself is cheats and using layers is cheats, but I, I think this is this is good and this only brings a better results at the end and the what you get at the end is like the most important thing, so, um, yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you for all the amazing tips and for stepping us through your process and giving us a little in, insight into how you got to where you are. Um, I wish you continued success and I look forward to working with you on more collaborations. And speaking <laughs> of that, I'm gonna much. let everybody know um, about your game as well. Um, 
Yeah. Maybe we should talk about that offline because you <laughs> mentioned there's going to be a Kickstarter campaign. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, at some point, yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thanks to everybody for joining us today. Please look for the recording on YouTube. It'll be up there in a couple hours. And thank you, Magdalena, for your time and talent. Thank you for having me. All right. Take care, everybody. We'll see you next month. I hope, anyway. Bye -bye. <laughs> okay, bye.